We all could use an escape these days, and what better way than immersing yourself in a good old-fashioned Western? Lee Cowan has wrangled up the true story of a lawman of the Old West who's finally getting his due. In the lore of the American West, where heroes are made of both lawmen and the lawless, there's a story of a man as tough as Billy the Kid, as good with a gun as Wild Bill Hickok, and as fast as a horse on the Pony Express. He was like the Michael Jordan of frontier lawmen. <laughs> he could whip any two men with his bare hands. At six foot two, Deputy U.S. Marshal Bass Reeves was as imposing as his mustache. So strong, it was said if he spit on a brick, it would shatter. He roamed the heart of the Indian and Oklahoma territories, almost with impunity. A nightmare for any outlaw, says author and African-American studies expert Art Burton. When I was doing the research, I, I was shaking my head all the time and saying, people are not going to believe this. You think a wild, wild west tale like that would almost tell itself. But when Burton began rustling up some research for a book on Reeves, he kept hitting dead ends. Like when you tried to trace the Bass Reeves family tree. A lady answered the phone and she said she had never heard of him. I said, well, he's an African-American who was a deputy as marshal. And she was very kind about it. She said, sir, I'm sorry, we do not keep black people's history here. Before he was a lawman, Reeves was a fugitive, a runaway slave from Texas. Imagine that, a former slave who eventually made a name for himself by arresting white people, no less. And yet his extraordinary story has largely been as forgotten as a ghost town. And Oklahomans say his time has come. He's a black man. I mean, he, he's the stuff of legend. I cannot imagine him being white and having the kind of career he had and it not be a major motion picture already, you know, maybe several times over. It sort of feels intentional, almost, the fact that we don't know more about him. We're set and action. To actor David Oyelowo, the tale of Bass Reeves has all the same ingredients as the Lone Ranger, only better. The Lone Ranger. It's one thing to be a white guy with a mask riding a pretty damn wonderful horse. It's another thing to be doing that with limited resources. You're a black man coming out of enslavement and you do it for 30 plus years and no one is paying you any attention. When we talked with him this past spring, he was trying to correct history's omission by acting in and executive producing an eight-part series for Paramount Plus, our sister network, called Lawmen, Bass Reeves. How about I return that part in exchange for information? I would just kill you instead. Could try, but you'd be going after a deputy U.S. Marshal, and there's half a dozen more I saw. It's a massive production, shot mostly on a ranch in Texas with veteran actors like Donald Sutherland. You up for the task? I wouldn't be sitting here my son the best if I wasn't. And Dennis Quaid. You are the most earnest man I have ever met. It's great to do a Western man. It's like being 12 years old again, it really is. <laughs> Quaid was equally impressed with Bass Reeves' real life loyalty to the law. The thing was is that Bass Reeves really was the real deal. He really was that. Who's your master? George Reeves. He a major in the 11 Texas Cavalry. Oyelowo says he studied recordings of slave narratives found in the Library of Congress to get his speech patterns just right. I'm speaking in my own English accent with you guys today. Normally, that's not how we roll. He also learned to roll and ride. I'm always looking for opportunities to scare myself, and that really did it. <laughs> He certainly had his share of insights into the man Bass Reeves must have been. Gotta admit, certain likeness, wouldn't you agree? But the role was also a reminder that no matter how long it takes, light always illuminates greatness. A tenet I live my life by is that excellence is the best weapon against prejudice. He was excellent. It was difficult to just say, oh, that's a black man who is unworthy, who should be subjugated. You couldn't dismiss him in that way. And that's also the reason why to not celebrate him is wrong. Basri's lived to be 71, spending his final years in the frontier town of Muskogee. How much are they? If you ever find yourself out here, take a walk through the Three Rivers Museum, where Reeves 
is still remembered. The fearless and dedicated lawman. And he celebrated every year at the Bass Reeves Western History Conference. Yes, sir, Bass Reeves was as good as they came. And when he died, he was an American hero. Is the mustache real? Yeah, uh, mustache is real. I give pulls for $10. <laughs> no one knows where the real Bass Reeves is buried. And maybe that only adds to the mystique. I know for author Art Burton, that doesn't matter. The child in him wants to thank Bass Reeves for giving him and other black Americans a tip of the hat to a legend all their own. I used to always wonder, where were we? So it was like God answered my prayers by giving me somebody before I passed away that said, well, we were part of the scene too.